Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We have a special guest today, a friend of our ATP family. But first, housekeeping always has to be done, which in this case is asking you out there in ATP land to please send a text message to sign yourself up for our alert system that gets you all of our content, including today's very special guest, absolutely free on the phone that you're probably holding in your hand right now. Simply text the word truth in the message box and send it to 88202, push send. It'll sign you up automatically. You'll get all of our content, including today's special guest, absolutely free. We never charge for content. That special guest, Will Johnson, is with us today. Will is the founder of Unite America First. He is a leading voice in the conservative movement. He gets out and about at almost every conference that we've just been talking about today. And he's a friend of the ATP family. Welcome back, Will. Hey, glad to be here, Barry. I got a lot of important stuff to ask you today. So let's just dive in head first. Let's start in Georgia. Herschel Walker, I remember him from college and uh, the pros, a great football player. He is a black conservative. He's running for the Republican nomination and then the Senate. And he's running against a very liberal black senator who now occupies the seat. So you've got two black men running against each other in Georgia in what used to be a reliably red state. The senator he's attempting to unseat after only a brief time in office has baggage, serious baggage. I mean, he was accused and there's video out there that seems to support the fact that he was physically abusing his wife and there's body cam footage from the police to support that. Didn't matter. He was elected anyway. And of course, we're talking about Senator and Pastor Raphael Warnock. So Donald Trump has endorsed Walker. So you got two black guys running against each other in a place that will end up having a black senator most probably again. And will decide, according to most pundits, the balance in the Senate going forward. So handicap the race for us, please. Who's going to win? You know, President Trump endorsed Herschel Walker, so that's going to be a plus for him. I think the people in Georgia, they've got to realize, Barry, what the Democrats have been doing to them. But then again, people still keep voting for the Democrats after year after year after year every election, knowing that the Democrats have done nothing for them. And it's just they go along with the talking points. So, you know, I can't call it. I would like to say it's, a, it's in the bag for Herschel Walker, but we've seen what the Democrats have done. They have deliberately tried to change the electoral system, the, 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 how the states hold their elections. They're literally trying to undermine them. But, and let me ask this question. I guess, does Herschel Walker have a driver license? Does he know what the DMV is? So, I mean, according to them, you got two black men running for office. Do either one of them have driver license? How does this happen? So, I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm rooting for Herschel Walker because we need true change. And he's the type of conservative that the left hates. He's black, he's conservative, and he's straight. And then Trump topped it off with, uh, put the icing on the cake. <laughs> Well, I guess we'll see. And it's not going to be a long time from now. The race is heating up and Herschel Walker mm -hmm. making speeches every day. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. He's he's knocking it. I guess, I guess you can say he's knocking the ball out the park or out of the football field in this case. <laughs> exactly. So let's, let's go to the border. Um, you're one of the few people who actually got off their tush on the couch and went there. So it's not just Will Johnson telling us what he's read. It's Will Johnson uh, reporting from the scene as to what you saw with your own two eyes. I'm referring specifically, the White House is repeating the same shtick over the last several weeks. The border is closed. Uh, I don't think so. And I know you've been there. Is that just BS? Maybe, maybe the, the actual front door has been closed. But if you want to come through the side window, if you want to come through the back door, crossing the river, that's fine. That's open 100%. When I was down there, you can see the cartel. They put about 15 to 20 people on these boats that they have. And they will bring them across and they have women and children, some even infants, mind you. And on these rapid, on the waves coming across, 
Soon as they get to the American side, the National Guard will help them out the boat, tell them to line up on the side over there. Then the cartel drives the boat back across the river, and they do that constantly, all day long. Before, the, the cartel would do it during the shift change of the Border Patrol. And the Border Patrol would go out there, and they would try to catch the cartel when they set foot on the shore, the U.S. soil. But they're no longer doing that. Now the now the National Guard there, they're helping them in. And then all the National Guard, what they do is they gather up the people and then they hand them over to Border Patrol. So Border Patrol is like never even on the river any longer. They're just taking the people in and processing them. It's the, the border is 100% wide open. And the, the 17,000 Haitians that supposedly got sent back to, uh, to Haiti did not go back. They're here in the United States of America. And there's no telling what kind of diseases that they're carrying because they said they're carrying some diseases that are supposedly worse than the COVID. So people need to wake up to what's happening. The border is not closed. The front door may be closed, but everything else is wide open. Well, let's talk about the plan that seems to be an end around the White House. And what I mean specifically, Will, there, and I, I'm sure you know about this, there are a number of private organizations raising millions and millions of dollars to continue building the wall privately. The state of Texas has allocated over a billion dollars to build the wall to protect themselves from Biden's abandonment of all the border wall construction contracts. Can that really work? Could, could they be successful enough to complete the wall, Will? You know, that's a very tough question because the federal government controls the border. They control our borders all across the United States of America. And there have been lawsuits. They find these liberal judges that come in and say, hey, you have to stop the building on this because it's unlawful, because they find a communist liberal judge to stop it. So I don't know what's going to happen. What, what I do see happening is that there's going to be a major battle between these, the states and the federal government. And maybe at some point, Texas will have to succeed in order to protect the people in it. Because Governor Abbott, his number one duty is protecting the people in this state. And if he's not doing that, then he needs to be removed. And that's why you have a lot of people right now running against him, because he used to lean and he would bend over and give the Democrats exactly what they want. But now, because of Ron DeSantis, I believe that he's stepping up to the plate, trying to make it look like he's strong. Or, you know, trying to say that he he's he's looking out for the constituents in this state. So but the border is wide open and the wall. I don't know, because they always find some kind of way to stop it. And let me ask you this, Barry, why? You know, think about it. Why would they want to stop the protection of the American citizens? That doesn't make any sense to me. We're talking about terrorists coming across the border and the wall is a deterrent. The people find, you know, find ways around stuff all the time. But the wall is a deterrent. When President Trump was in office, he deterred these people from coming. Biden came. The memo went out. They spent money, money to get these people to come now. And that's why we're being invaded on our southern border. All true. Every word of it. So let's let's change uh, the pace a little bit. You have an article up on United America First, your site about Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen giving a, I guess, a dictatorial order for all American banks to report all transactions over $600. There's a massive pushback nationwide from states, attorney generals, uh, banking commissions, and the banks themselves saying, we're not going to do it. Yellen came back and said, the purpose is to catch the rich and the taxes they owe. Is she serious that only the rich have $600? Will the banks and the states comply with this absurdity? You know what, Barry? I was actually talking about that on a video I did as well. How in the world do they think that $600 is only for the rich? Seriously. I mean, maybe because the rich can spend $600 and not even think about it. But you're talking about $600 for people who want to go buy a refrigerator, people who want to go buy a couch, if you can buy a couch today because of what's happening on our on our coast. But people have needs that they have to buy big ticket items because $600 is a big ticket item. You may need to get a furniture or a couch or a bed or a mattress or something. That's a, you know, I guess you can consider it a big ticket item, but for them to have to do that, saying that for 
they're going after middle to low income families across the nation, 100%. Seriously, because you're talking about one to one percent. They spend a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, and to them, it's like they just spent ten dollars. So for six hundred dollars, is they're coming after every single American. And be honest with you, Barry, I think the reason why they did six hundred dollars because if someone goes by, go and buys a firearm, and buy rounds with that, buy a holster with it, that is it pretty much adds up to around six hundred dollars. So then that way they will flag them because that's who they want to find out the gun sales that are about to go through the roof. I Honestly, I, I, gun sales are through the roof and yes. ammunition is selling out from coast to coast. Well, yes. Yes. people are exercising their second amendment rights. Now, I hope as you travel, I mean, you're, you go around the country all the time speaking and investigating and filming. I hope you're not sitting on any Southwest airline tickets because Thousands upon thousands of Southwest Airlines Airlines flights are grounded, putting hundreds of thousands of people, paid customers, on their butts in airports, wondering, is the plane ever going to take off? Southwest says it's because of weather delays. And I looked online, I couldn't find any bad weather. I think what it really is, and that's what the inside story is, it's a pilot sick out where they're saying, if we have to get the jab, we ain't flying for you anymore. What say you? You know, I was just in Miami and I got hit when it first happened. I was flying Southwest, woke up that morning. My flight was at 1230 and it just so happened a young lady called my, my, my roommate because I was sharing the hotel room, Anthony Aguero. And she said that her flight got canceled. And I said, what? So I looked and sure enough, mine was canceled. Anyways, I was able to get on another flight, American Airlines, and while I was sitting on the airplane, Barry, I took my phone and pointed it out the window. Beautiful skies, uh, clouds in the sky, looked be like a beautiful day. Other than, you know, a few clouds here and there, but it was beautiful. The, it wasn't hot like it was, had been a couple of days before that. And I'm like, where's the weather they're talking about? And they're telling, well, there's weather in Dallas. So you, you mean to tell me the weather in Dallas is affecting Miami? Not true at all. And the, the crazy thing is you can't even talk about the weather on YouTube any longer because anyone who talks about climate change or climate change denier on YouTube, they're subject to take your content down. This is all a farce what they're doing. And it's all because they want to control all of us. And this is terrible. I actually have some more tickets, Barry. I'm looking to head to LA this weekend for an event that a BLM and Antifa might show up. You know how they act when they go and act crazy. But I'm kind of curious. As of right now, it says my flight is okay. So they could change without notice. It's crazy. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you may be in LA for a while. Well, <laughs> tell, tell people how they can find out about what you're doing and read more about what you're producing out there. It's really good stuff. Well, if you go to UnitesAmericaFirst.com and click on the little hamburger stack, if you're on a mobile device and just say connect with Will, it'll show you every platform that I'm on. That's the easiest way. Perfect. And for ATP viewers out there, Will Johnson's on with us every week or so. Uh, and he does a radio show for us every week. He's fantastic. I urge you to follow him both here at ATP and at his website, Unite America First. In the meantime, if you didn't do it when I asked you previously, please do it now. Send the word truth on your cell phone, text message to 88202, push send. We'll be signing you up instantly in about three seconds. You'll get all of our stuff, including the fabulous Will Johnson, absolutely for free. Thanks for coming on to join us today for ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum.